Hey, I'm Zoe and welcome back to my channel, Zoe's All Booked. If you're new here, welcome to the shit show and welcome to Couch Miss Day 5. Ignore the voice. I am recovering from being sick for like three weeks and I just got my voice back, but we're gonna we're gonna deal with the nasally whatever. So today is all about gift giving. I'm gonna give you guys a semi-comprehensive list of ideas for the reader in your life. I've got books for several different genres and then at the end I'm gonna do a non-bookish item thing that most readers love and I will leave a bunch of small businesses linked in the description as well as links to all of the books I'm talking about and the pages where you can find like the most popular books for the people who like to keep up with what's currently trending or whatever. It's gonna be a whole thing. Some of these are books that I have read and loved myself and I am biased and I want everyone else to read them. Some of them are just what I've heard from other people and what people I trust have told me are really good and I have yet to read them. But before I get started we're gonna start with one non-bookish item for the jewelry lover in your life. As you can see I've got these gorgeous hoops and I've got this gorgeous bracelet that you can't see from that far away, but I will do close-ups in a hot second. Another pair of earrings that I'm having a Sabrina Carpenter heart moment with. Like, you, you can't go wrong. It's Anna Luisa. They are having a massive holiday sale. And if you know a reader who loves jewelry, who loves to elevate their everyday look, like, I'm in PJs with these, with these hoops. And they, like, it's giving everything it needs to give right now. They're having a massive holiday sale. I will leave everything linked down below. If you haven't heard of Ana Luisa, where have you been? They are fantastic. It's not the first time I've worked with them. And every time, everything that they have sent me, high quality. High quality, but affordable. What? Who's upstairs banging like that? Did somebody fall out of the bed? I think we're good. I think, I think, I think my kids are just that excited about Ana Luisa too. High quality very affordable, very fast shipping, um, pieces starting as low as 39 US dollars, which is unheard of for quality. If we're being totally honest, like I wear these, not these in particular because they are kind of bulky and kind of heavy. These are my like going out earrings, but I wear pieces from Ana Luisa every single day. I know in my last time I said that I didn't really get like bracelets or necklaces or anything because my kids are demons and they break them, but <laughs> I had to. I had to. I needed a nice bracelet for when I go out. Like I had a, a parent council meeting today and I wore these. Got so many compliments on them. I wore my bracelet. Again, so many compliments. You cannot go wrong with Ana Luisa, especially during the holiday season. I'm so sorry. <coughs> I bit my tongue. I coughed and I bit my tongue. Pause. You know what? It could be worse though. I could be wearing ugly earrings that tarnish so easily. These ones, not it. They will not tarnish, not like your your cheap jewelry that you can get anywhere. Because Ana Luisa, quality, okay? I'm telling you, quality. Not only that, but in this season of giving, in this holiday season, when there is just a lot of overconsumption and a lot of waste happening, they're a carbon neutral company. So they are doing their part to make sure that the world is not completely going to shit. We love that. So if you need a stocking stuffer or a nice gift for a loved one, especially for a reader who just wants to look hella cute while they're reading the books, click the link, do the thing, get a piece for you, get a piece for a friend. Everybody gets the, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here, but everybody gets the joy of Ana Luisa jewelry. I own many Ana Luisa pieces now and there is not one single one. That was not actually English, I think, that came out of my mouth. There is not one single one that I have not gotten copious amounts of compliments when I leave the house, which admittedly, not often, but when I do, eyes are drawn to the Ana Luisa. Let me set the stage here for you. It's the holiday season. You are going out to your favorite bookstore browsing, wearing a cute ass pair of Ana Luisa earrings or a necklace or a bracelet or what have you. And somebody else is browsing. Who's, who's interrupting my story? My husband. Garbage. Anyways, you're browsing, you bump into somebody else browsing and they're like, oh my God, cute jewelry. I love that. 
you look down, you guys are holding the same books. You have the same taste in books, similar taste in jewelry. Bam! New bookish best friend. Brought to you by Anna Luisa and books. And if you already have a bookish best friend, just ignore that, okay? Put yourself in a different scenario wearing some cute shit. Oh my god, that was loud. Go get some. Click the link. <coughs> I am working myself up here. Let's get into the gift guide. I had all the books written down in order of like different genres, but they're all like spread out next to me. So this is just going to be willy nilly before I start. And so I don't get any comments after. I don't read literary fiction. I don't know much about it, but like I'll leave links to popular stuff if I can find them. I don't read nonfiction. I don't read horror. I don't read graphic novels or manga or anything either. So I will find links for as much of that stuff as possible, but I am not the go-to person for that kind of shit. So apologies in advance. Let's get into this. What's closest to me here? You. We are starting out with a bang, pun intended here, with some romance books. Gifts for the romance lover in your life. They, these are a mix of some older books, some newer books, and they all are books that I am obsessed with and would like everybody to read. Starting with my favorite author duo that a lot of people actually don't know are, are, are a duo. They think it's, it's one author, Christina Lauren. Christina Billing and Lauren Hobbs. Christina Hobbs and Lauren Billing. I don't remember right now. My brain cannot function. It's almost 10 o'clock at night. It's past my bedtime. This is not one of their newer releases. This one in particular, Beautiful Bastard, is their first series. It's actually Twilight fan fiction. This is their spiciest series. I'm talking spice on page like 10, possibly. Maybe five? Page 10. I'm obsessed with this entire series. I love all of their books, but this is the one that I keep coming back to the very most. This one, the second one, and the third one in the series out of five are my absolute favorite. This one is a forbidden office romance. Um, again, spice very early on, and I just, I think that like their spice is top tier. I love it. Christina Lauren are also coming out with new books like on the regular, like so quick. So if you're looking for a new favorite author, or if you want somebody else to find a new favorite author, highly recommend Christina Lauren. Next up, this one is an oldie, but a goodie. When does this even come out? It's not, it's not actually that old. I am just being entirely fucking ridiculous right now. 2018. This is A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. This one is, what if those emails that you get from some random person saying that they are a prince from Africa and they need all of your money because they somehow don't have any of your money if those were actually like not scams and if they were real. But it's a woman in STEM and she finds out that um, the guy that's been sending all these emails claiming that he is a prince and from an African country is actually who he says he is and surprise, she really is betrothed to him. I love it. I love Alyssa Cole's books so much. Again, I keep coming back to this series. I think I've read it like six times now. You cannot go wrong with Alyssa Gould's books. Next up, Bridesmaid for Hire by Megan Quinn. This was a new favorite author. Was it this book or another one? I read two books by her at the same time earlier this year, but new favorite author, laugh out loud funny. I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but these ones, you cannot go wrong. I mean it laugh out loud funny. And for my visual people here, let me see where, where's one? Excuse me, what are we, where did they go? Have I been duped? Did I forget? Ah, there we are. There's some semi-spicy illustrations in all of Megan Quinn's books. So if you are getting a gift for yourself or someone else who you know is a visual kind of person, Megan Quinn's books, have illustrations. Not like too many, but they are sprinkled throughout. If you're getting somebody a holiday book, How My Neighbor Stole Christmas by Megan Quinn. I am 75% done it now, I think. I'm obsessed. I love it. It's very much in the style of How the Grinch Stole Christmas with a narrator and everything. Again, laugh out loud funny. So cute. This one, not so much, but the other, uh, another one of our series, 
the uh, the Kane brothers billionaire romance if you're into that shit. I am. Speaking of, this is King of Wrath, the first book in the Kings of Sin series by Anna Huang. I read Megan Quinn and Anna Huang uh, at the same time earlier this year for uh, Mother's Day. These were a Mother's Day treat to myself. And let me tell you, treated myself. If you have a mom in your life, maybe not your mom, because like it could be weird, but like a spouse or a friend who's a mom who needs just some spicy escapism every once in a while, pick it up. Do yourself a favor if it's for you. Do somebody else a favor. I'm obsessed with Anna Huang. I am, a, I am now a stan. Anna Huang and Megan Quinn, Christina Lauren and Alyssa Cole, we, we already know. We already know that I'm obsessed and I will keep going back. New favorite author, if you want one, if somebody else wants one, try out Anna Huang. Billionaire Romance, Forced Marriage. It's an arranged marriage, but like arranged via blackmail. So it's it's kind of forced. I love Vivian and Dante. Um, I don't... I've read the first three in this series. I don't know which one's my favorite. I don't know if I can actually pick a favorite. But a friend of mine said that book number four, um, Zoe from Zoe's Bookshelf, book number four, the most recent one, is her favorite. I got hair in my mouth. So I really hope she's not lying because I'm going to read that one soon. But if you want to find out if she's lying, pick these up and read the whole series. And the fifth one, I don't actually have a physical copy of. I've read the Kindle Unlimited, but I need to buy it. The fifth one is Good Game by Madison Fox, a fellow booktuber, book talker, bookstagrammer, and just all around sunshine human being. She's fantastic. You need to go and um, follow all of her social media and pick up her books immediately. This one is a gamer romance. I read the first one and the second one in about two days. Like total, not two days each, like two days total. And the third one just came out. It just finished out the series. And I'm very, very excited to get into that one. Are they billionaires too? I can't remember. They're rich ass hoes. That's for sure. The the gamers. Um, A girl falls for a masked video game streamer. And the spice, top tier. Like, I knew it had to be good because Madison is known for reading her spicy romances. Actually, I have a vlog coming out later this month where I read spicy recommendations from Madison like two years ago and I never got around to posting it, but we're just not going to talk about that. We're just going to watch it later this month. So I knew it had to be good, right? I knew there was like a, there was a baseline level of how good the spice was going to be exceeded all of my expectations like i sent i sent out quite a few screenshots to my husband and i think i'm just gonna i'm gonna purchase a physical copy like i have to anyways because it was so good and i need it on my shelves but i think i might just like slip it to him and just have him take notes because like madison woof, chef's kiss fantastic and that rounds out the recommendations for romance um <coughs> if i could function for three seconds, that would be fantastic. I'm gonna move these, and uh, what's what's closest to me here? Next up for the, oh, I don't even know what's happening here. Mystery thriller lover in your life or yourself. This one, these ones, I gotta say full disclosure, I've read three of them. One I'm halfway through, and one I have not read, but I have just heard amazing things. So we are just gonna. We're just going to dive right into these. The first one is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. I am about halfway through this one. Um, I started reading it a while ago and then life got busy and I forgot that I was reading it. That is not a testament to what this book is like because I was really, really liking it and I have no fucking clue what's going on, which is weird because most mysteries or thrillers I can figure out in the first five pages what's actually happening. This one still has me guessing and I love that. This is also the author of The Girl on the Train, which wildly popular. Um, uh, what else has she, what, what else has Paula Hawkins written? I'm gonna go ahead and say that based on everything I've heard, you cannot go wrong with a Paula Hawkins. This is my first one by her. I do own another one that's on my TBR. Something with blue. I don't, that's all I can tell you at this point. This one is a psychological suspense with the slipperiness of truth and one family drowning 
in secrets. There's a lot to do with water, which really trips me out because I cannot swim, so maybe that's why I'm so like, oh. But in a good way, I really like the narrative and how this one is being told so far. I I really hope the last half, I'm not eating my words and like it's very predictable and just not good. But from what I've read so far, very intriguing. If you know somebody, again, or if you, again, are into that shit, Paula Hawkins. Next up, we have my girl Alyssa Cole once again. I tap this book a lot. Can you even see that? Despite the glasses, I'm actually still pretty fucking blind over here. This one, Rear Window meets Get Out. I still have nightmares about Get Out because that was, that was a very uncomfortable movie experience for me. But like, I loved it, but I hated it. This, I loved it. Again, very like, not uncomfortable in a bad way, but it makes you uncomfortable. It makes you sit with some shit. And I really like it. This was Alyssa Cole's first foray into thrillers. And going from romance to thriller, I really enjoyed it. I really, I really liked it. Yeah, I don't want to say, I don't want to say too much about this one. Because, like, I, I want it to be kind of a little bit of a surprise. But, rear window, get out. If you like either one or both of them, try it. Pick it up. Then... I've got The Maid by Nina Prose. I actually read this one with my sister-in-law for a like little mini book club that we did earlier this year. I really liked it. The titular character here, The Maid, she is an autistic maid who's like very, very exacting about things. And I actually loved the representation. It was like just the way she was written was fantastic just the way it kind of it kind of tackles a lot of like society's um interpretations of autistic people because molly the maid molly maid yes she comes across a dead body in one of the hotel rooms that she's cleaning and based on her demeanor and just her being naturally herself a lot of people police included think she's the number one suspect because she's not acting in the way that they are expecting and the way that like it all plays out i really really enjoyed this one it's short it's sweet you could read this in one sitting if you so desired or if you know a fast reader that you want to give this to i think it's a series too i'm not 100 percent sure but i i remember a christmas novella and like a blue one something like this i don't know it was good though i really i really like that one the next one I have not read this book. This has been on my TBR for uh, a month or two. Again, another maid. It's The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. I have not read anything else by Frieda McFadden, but I have not been keeping up with new releases and thrillers because life has gotten in the way. And also books in Canada, in a can the books in Canada are far too expensive for me to be willy-nilly buying books the way I used to that are not at a used bookstore. Shut up. Oh my God, I got a tickle. No. Go away. Shout out to Goodwill Bookstore for being able to fund my addiction. But this one came from a book swap type thing. I had heard amazing things, so I saw it and I snatched it immediately. I think there's maybe one or two Frieda McFadden books that I've heard are just like kind of ridiculous in the, tw in the plot twist department. But this one, I'm pretty sure and everything else that I've heard about her, she is a queen of the thriller genre. I will be a test dummy for this very, very soon. This is probably actually going to go on my November, my, De my December TBR, which is already going to be up at this point, but I haven't read it yet. I haven't, I, I haven't done the TBR yet, is what I'm trying to say, because I'm filming all of these out of order, because why would I do things in order? That just doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. I've heard amazing things about Freedom McFadden, worth a shot for you for the book lover in your life and finally the last time i lied by riley saggers say i think that's how you say it i don't even, I don't fucking know at this point um i remember really liking this one again it was like i was saying with into the water first like 10 pages i was like this is exactly what's gonna happen and i was right but the journey getting there was a lot of fun i really really like this and i have heard a lot of good things about Riley Sager in general and from everything I've seen you know it's just a little bit rude when my memory card is full in the middle of a sentence from everything I've seen Riley Sager is a pseudonym 
news to me. I didn't I didn't know that. Anyways, um, everything I've seen about Riley Sager's books has been phenomenal. So we're going to trust popular opinion on the other ones because I've only read this one. We're also going to trust popular opinion for Freedom McFadden. But seems like it'd be a good idea for the mystery thriller lover in your life. Next up, we are going to my favorite genre, aside from romance, um, but like my favorite genre. You are all so far away. This couch is not even that long, but I am short af and I got little tiny T-Rex arms. Fantasy, some big heckin' chonkers. And we are starting with a fully appropriate one because I'm in the middle of reading Aragon for the first time, the, the Inheritance Cycle. The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. If you've been around on my channel, if you've seen me ever, you know that I will not shut up about this book, this series in general. Chef's Kiss. Fantastic. It's so good. The dragons, unlike any other dragons I've seen, is the magic system. Tao, the main character, the shit he does to become the best swordsman in the entire world is like fucking unhinged and we're here for it. Also, the third book, Last I heard, coming out sometime like March 2025. You get this one, you get the second one, take your time reading it. Third book comes out right after. We're thinking, see? The gift that keeps on giving. Highly recommend this series. I, um, mm, mm. If you, a fantasy lover, have not read this, rectify. If you know somebody who is a fantasy lover and has not rectified, or, or has not read this, rectify okay that's an order but like please i'm sorry for being mean but do it right now anyways uh next up jade city by fonda lee again the magic system it's not like magic magic but like i like it oh, i like it if you like family politics family drama if you like people being absolute fucking badasses. If you like getting to the end of a series and like screaming at the audiobook that you're listening to because what the fuck just happened? This one's for you. If you like magic systems where it's not like actually magic, but it's just people enhancing their own abilities via something else that they can put into their body, this one's for you. So like Joe Blow can do it, but like certain people are like more not susceptible but like more whatever the word is i'm looking for like it's easier for their bodies to handle it if you like asian inspired settings this one is set in i think like it's hong kong inspired i finished the series last year so like that was a very long time ago and i actually cannot remember that far back but i'm pretty sure it's hong kong inspired the call family lives rent free in my mind absolutely rent free i love that series so good like each book yelling at it while i was listening to it um the the audiobook narrator too top tier next up this is the soul's discord by jay juniper this is an indie book um so was um madison's from the romance one good game um so support indie authors this one is by jay juniper another booktuber um and another absolute ray of sunshine of a human being go subscribe to her channel go follow her on social media and then go buy this book it's cute it's whimsical there's a lot of dust flying around i need another haul i'll be back in one hot second because i cannot fucking function like this oh my god or oh. oh. that was just a second clap butt we're back also i forgot that i had a tea up there I mean, it's cold as shit now, but whatever, it's fine. Whimsical, cozy fantasy, but like, not the kind of like cozy fantasy that you're expecting. Uh, political, um, platonic friendships are a forefront. There's an elk named Cinnamon. That's all you need to know. But cinnamon. There is not enough of the elk named Cinnamon, though. Like, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in another book. Another book, another another video that'll be coming out this month. Jade, more cinnamon. That's that's my only request. Fantastic. Also, if you are like a map person or a just like general extra 
fantasticness kind of person, this one is for you because we've got a gorgeous map and Jade also went through and was entirely extra, but like my kind of extra that I really like. Did a whole like Zodiac thing as well. All of the explanations for magic, or not, not like for magic, but like explaining the magic system. Also look at the colors, gorgeous. They match my star that I made, the, the pink and the purple. Also, this one is near and dear to my heart, the colors specifically, because apparently in one of my very first videos, I described a shade of purple that was my very favorite. And I have no recollection of this because it was 2017, possibly 2018. But Jade has the memory of an elephant and remembered that and described the color that she wanted for the base of this the way that I described it in the video. So I influenced a book cover. Amazing to me. Like, honestly, I don't remember shit that I said in a video that I filmed like two weeks ago when I could talk. So it is what it is, but fantastic, gorgeous cover. Look at it, love it, buy it, appreciate it. Thank you. Finally, The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons, another one with dragons. I love this. This is a completed series. Also, forgot to mention, oh, no, that wasn't, Oh, I have one more. Also a completed series. The way I'm obsessed with this and the way I want everybody to read this series is like unhealthy. Um, it's got some of my very favorite things. It's got a narrative style that isn't perfectly linear. It starts out as a conversation between two people and then recounting the events that led up to how they got to the very beginning of the book. Tropes flipped on their head. Kieran, the main character, is basically the chosen one. Except he is chosen to like destroy the world, actually. That's part, that's his destiny. It's not to save it, it's to destroy it. And I love that shit. I absolutely love that shit. Giant cast of characters, dragons, very cool magic system, lots of betrayal, lots of political maneuvering. It's so, so good. It's also very queer like oh just a lot of queer characters so if that's important to you this is the one just i'm not even gonna say more than that it's just it's hella queer and you're gonna enjoy that again this one too audiobooks so good i binged all five audiobooks in like a week and a half and these are hefty books too so good so if you or a book lover in near you in your life i don't know what the first thing i said was that just doesn't even fucking make sense at all but we're just gonna we're gonna leave it if you're ready to sit down and binge a series this is the one that is the one or this next one also a completed series also one of my favorite things in the entire world the black prism by brent weeks the first first book in the Lightbringer series this is the first book in the course of dragons series you know, it's even more rude than my memory card dying in the middle of a sentence. My whole ass battery dying in the middle of a sentence. Anyways, I know I've mentioned the audiobooks and the narrators being good for some of the other ones, but this one, when I tell you that when I listen to this audiobook for, or the audiobooks for this series, I think my own thoughts in this narrator's voice for three to five business days after, I'm not fucking around. Like I think in this man's voice, it's not right. It, it should be illegal. It should be studied. It should be something. If you like a series where there are so many times where you're like, what the actual fuck just happened? Or more specifically, there is no way I just read what the fuck I just read. And then you go back and then it's like, oh my God, the signs were there but you never would have guessed. The plot twists. The plot twists are plot twisting in this one. I feel like I'm out of focus right now in the thing, but like, mm, I actually can't see that far. So we're just gonna have to deal with it. If I am, plot twist after plot twist after plot twist. And these characters, there's some that you're just like, I absolutely hate them and I wanna choke them, but they're amazing characters, truly so good. Like it, it these books are large. Yes, they take you on an absolute fucking journey. Top to bottom, left to right, you go on a journey with these books. These books have everything that I like in a fantasy series. If you're like me 
and you have like a, a just like a little checklist of things that you look for in a physical book this gets all of them number one on the spine it shows the number of the book in the series so you when you're shelving them you're not guessing number two a table of contents number three a comprehensive map number four not in this one but in the later books in the series there is a recap of the book or books that came before like the fifth book in the series has a recap for each of the first four books summarizing all the major things that happen so you're not totally lost and you don't have to reread all of the books that came before if you don't want to if you're like me and you do that anyways because you just need to know everything like you can skip that but it's there for you i don't even remember what number i was on anyways at the back character lists going over every major or semi-minor character that you could possibly need to know followed by a glossary of all of the terms and the different languages from the different countries that you need to know um so you can keep things straight because it's a thick ass fantasy book with a lot of shit so you need to keep that straight followed by an appendix on is like describing the magic system so you can follow along what more can you ask for in a fantasy book it covers every single aspect of everything that i love i'm a little bit biased with that one um everybody should go read it right now um but also buy it for yourself and for the your favorite fantasy book lover in your life finally we are going to go to a more broad spectrum because all of these books have been for adults and i really wouldn't recommend most of them to anybody like under the age of like 16 at the very lowest we're gonna go with some young adult books i have all the way over here some of my very favorite young adult books and again i have not kept up with a lot of new releases there are some from several different genres here starting with the never tilting world by rin chapeco this one is a duology and the world is so cool quite literally never tilts one side is perpetually day one side perpetually night because some shit happened and it stopped the world from spinning and they need to figure out how to get it spinning again because you cannot sustain life with just daytime or just nighttime and it's it's very cool twin goddesses have always ruled and then one time the twin goddesses uh they didn't do what they were supposed to do things did not go the way they were supposed to go and here we are now with a never holding world completed duology so much fun i was blown away by this series i what who am i hearing stomping around up there like i just i don't even understand back to this completed duology it's absolutely worth your while to pick this up for yourself or for someone else so good i've discovered the source of the thumping that i'm hearing my oldest fell off of his bed but it's a floor bed so it's like literally just a couple inches off the ground and he just kind of rolled um so we're good i thought i was losing my mind but i'm not next up is a good girl's guide to murder by holly jackson yes this is very popular on book talk but it's for an absolute fucking reason so good i read this one in one sitting i parked my ass and i told my husband to deal with the children because i was reading a book and i couldn't stop i literally could not put this down again it for me it was like a little bit predictable but that didn't ruin my enjoyment my foot is so itchy right now and i cannot focus on anything else a popular high school senior i believe was killed by her boyfriend and then he killed himself and five years later the tragedy still rocks this town and a girl decides to do her senior project about this investigation because she's like i don't think he did it and then shit hits the fan there are sequels to this i think it's a trilogy i have not read the other ones which is awful of me because i really like this one and i need to finish them highly recommend this one though um i really really liked it i really like how it played out <clears throat> what is with the raspy again despite being like a little bit predictable well worth this next one if you have ever been anywhere within a 10 foot radius of my channel you will have heard me shrieking from the rooftops about this one etiquette and espionage by gail carragher i love this this is the first book in the ya 
series set in this world. There is a young adult, a new adult, and an adult series. Chronologically, it goes young adult, adult, new adult, but this one came out after the adult series. It's steampunk. It's set in an alternate history England in the 1850s, I believe. Vampires, werewolves, ghosts, and finishing schools, where they learn the fine art of finishing others. A school for spies and assassins who happen to be young ladies of quality. I'm obsessed. This is also the reason for my YouTube channel. So like, who knows? Pick this book up and it could change your life. Quite literally, this is, this is the reason I had this book in class and a fellow student in my class was like, oh my God, you're reading a young, a young adult book. I love young adult books. And then we became friends. And then turns out she had a booktube channel and then the rest is history. And this, this is, this is kind of like, again, the, the gift that keeps on giving. This is a completed series. The adult series is complete and the new adult series is complete. So you can dive into a world that spans across multiple decades. Is this bitch home already? Oops, I got it. I got a text him. My husband's home from work and I wasn't expecting him for another like three minutes. It's so good. I love everything about this series. This one, the adult one, the new adult one, I don't even know which one's my favorite. This one kind of holds a special place in my heart though, but this one, I love it. Gail Carriger is one of my favorite authors. Next, we have Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This one checks so many fucking boxes for me. It's unreal. If you know somebody who is into King Arthur retellings, but like with a little twisty twist, this one's for you. I love a good retelling. I love King Arthur retellings in particular. I love really cool magic systems. This is it. This is, yeah. Okay, I just wanna make sure I grab the first one, not the second one, because that's exactly something I would do. Not only that, it's a black girl magic retelling. Do yourself a favor, pick this one up. Um, the second book is out. I don't know when the third book's coming out. Let me, let me pause here for a second and give it a little Google. Ooh, okay. Third book is coming out early 2025, and apparently there's gonna be a fourth book as well. So, just like with Rage of, with, oh, Rage of Dragons, just like with Rage of Dragons, get this one, get the second one, read them both in time for the third book to come out so you can continue on your lovely journey of reading a fantabulous book. And finally, for book recommendations, the surprise breakout star that I read last year, this one came out in 2021, but I finally got around to it last year because I suck ass. This is sci-fi, which I normally don't like, but this is one of my favorite books of last year. It just, it sticks with you. Two guys alone on a spaceship. There's nobody else there, except there seems to be evidence of somebody else there. Things are not adding up. Things are creepy. They are alone in space. So why does it feel like they're not actually alone? The ending of this, stuck with me for weeks and weeks after. I couldn't stop thinking about it. And there's a prequel coming out soon. I don't wanna say much more than that because like, I don't wanna give anything away at all. Also, I feel myself getting very stuffy right now and I don't know how much longer I can speak. But this, this is it. This is the one. Okay, so that's it for books. I am going to, I'll just, I'm just gonna leave links down below for like different websites that you can find, bookish merch, mugs and other, blankets and like comfy clothes and whatnot that you can get for a book lover, including um, like small bookish shops. Um, I asked around on my Instagram and my threads account for recommendations for small bookish merch shops. So I will leave all of that linked down below. Honestly, when in doubt, gift cards. Gift cards to favorite shops, gift cards to bookstores, gift cards to anything bookish related. You cannot go wrong with gift cards because it gives us the the freedom of choice. And that way you are guaranteed to not buy another copy of a book that somebody already owns because that has happened before to anybody that has a book collection. It's inevitable at some point, it's gonna happen. So if you wanna get the perfect gift and you just can't pick a book, either get a gift card or offer to bring a bookworm to a store and just let them roam free for a little bit. Don't talk to them. Don't look at them. Just let them roam. This is a not so subtle hint for my husband at this point. Actually, no, he likes to stay close by because he holds the books for me. And he makes the odd hilarious comment here or there. 
but mostly stands in silence while I peruse and browse and just holds my books for me. That's what we need in life. All right, we have come to the end of this. I feel like this is going to be a very long video when it's all said and done, but it is what it is. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any books that you will always recommend that somebody else gets a bookworm as a present. Um, if you have anything to add to the list, if you have any small bookish merch shops that you want to shout out, leave all of that stuff in the comments. Or if that's just too much, you don't have a lot of time, drop some hearts down below, preferably purple ones or pink because the star and also those are just my favorite colors. As always to stay updated with my current reads and how I'm feeling about them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, Storygraph, and Threads, all at Zoe's All Booked, which I will leave linked down below in the description box along with the link for the Ana Luisa jewelry because again, major holiday sales, they're hella cute. You can look super cute while you're reading at a holiday party, while you are browsing at a bookstore and you want to meet your new bookish best friend, or when you are curled up on the couch with a brand new book and you just, you just want to look cute for yourself because that is the most valid time to be looking cute. So click the link, add to cart a gift for a friend, add to cart a gift for you, and make everybody's holidays merry and bright. Is that possibly the cheesiest thing I've ever said in my entire life? I think so. I, th I think we're there. But you know what? Tis the damn season. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share the video so everyone else can join in on the madness, the chaos, the shit show, and the cheesy ass shit that I say. With that, we have come to the very end of the video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I love you awesome nerds, and I will see you in the next one for Couchmas Day 6, which is actually how I made this janky looking thing. My very first time crafting in at least a decade, probably ever, if we're being like totally honest, that wasn't like part of a school project, but I did it all by myself. And she's a little janky looking, but I'm proud of her. And she's made out of book pages. So tune in tomorrow to see how that went. It was a little bit of a shit show. Okay, love you, bye.